What is up guys, Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker, all things comics from a creator. Um, so it's a really tight week for me, and, but I've been trying to do at least one video a week um, since the new year, so um, this is going to be the first live stream of the year. Um, I'm actually on my lunch break from work, but you know... I figured it'd be a good time to to do this. Uh, I have a really busy weekend, and this is actually going to be like the last live stream on this computer because I'm getting a new computer on Monday. Um, so that's really going to change how I work. I'm really excited for that. Uh, but anyway, it's Friday. I hope you are all having a a good end of your week and a good start to your weekend. Um, and whether you're watching this now or later, uh, I hope you enjoy drawing along with me. Yo, what's up, Edo Mame? Welcome, welcome. I know it's a weird time. It's like 2 p.m. on a Friday, but, you know, this was the best time for me, sadly. Uh, it's gonna get easier next. I'm, I'm gonna try to do this at a more regular um, period. But anyway, this is ish. This is a page from issue two of Secret Heart Attack. Um, issue one released last year, and I've been slowly and steadily working on issue two. This is um. This is. A, a, one of many starts to issue two because I have so much info to cram into the issue um, that it's been really kind of tricky to find my, my entry point into it. Uh, but I'm really excited for this because I think this is um, this is how it should be, how the story should go. Uh Hello, Oliver. Welcome. Welcome. Um, Edo Mame is asking, what's the Procreate inking tool you use? Um, so I use uh, Kyle T. Webster brush. Uh, Kyle T. Webster is like a legend in the digital brush making um, community. Uh, and this is his brush, Too Smooth to be Forgotten. Um, it's actually a... It's actually, <laughs> it's actually a Photoshop brush, but um, uh, what you call it? The Procreate allows you to use Photoshop brushes and load them. They're ABR files, uh, so you know, it works fine. It does the job, uh, and it's John Falloon in the house. Hello, sir. Um. John, I, I've been going to comics class here and there uh, since the, the year started, and I half, I keep half expecting to see you there. Uh, anyway, I hope you're, uh, your comics are going well. Um, guys, if you haven't read John's stuff, it's so, so good. He, he does some of the most awesome, mind-numbingly good comics. I have seen here in New York. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all for being here at this weird, awkward time. It's such a such a cold day here in New York. I actually spent some time this morning at a coffee shop working on this. I. Uh, I don't know if you guys enjoy doing that too, but I like getting like a, a cold brew and just zoning out with music in my ears and drawing in the coffee shops here and there. It's quite fun. It's expensive, but it's fun. So this is Red Thunder. I'm trying to remember what his colors were. Um, Wait. Okay, here, I have, his, have a reference actually. Reference. Um... Mostly because I just want to get it right. I know I made him 
very workmanlike. The design is supposed to feel like a classic Superman type, you know, like a strong man. But, um, oh, that's a little too dark. Let's make it lighter. Oh, much lighter. But I put like a wrestling belt on. Also kind of like a reference to Luchadors. And also because he's sort of like a dad, superhero dad archetype, you know. So that's cool. I haven't done his shoelaces. I'm going to go in and draw that later. But it's weird. I'm doing this out of sequence, but it's such a complicated drawing. It's easier to block out the colors. And then go in with a little more detail after. Uh, at least for this one. And if you're wondering what's going on, this is him um, in a team up with uh, with the Unmaker. And they're fighting the Mama Machine, which is this Mother Goose themed uh, nano villain. It's, it's like an alien made of nanotech that imprinted on a Mother Goose book. And um, basically forms up uh, these like Mother Goose characters. Just because it's trying to appear friendly to the human race. Uh, so that's that's why these kids are all around. That's um uh that's little Miss Muffet on the left. And down here grabbing him is um Jack B. Nimble. The the kid who jumped over the candlestick. Jack B. Nimble, Jack B. Quick. And there's a dish that ran away with the spoon over here, and there's a cow that jumped over the moon, and so on and so forth. I don't know how familiar you are with children's books. Oh man, John, be nice to see you back in March. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, guys, if you're ever in New York, I really recommend going to the Art Students League of New York, specifically the comics class on Sundays in the afternoons. It's such a, um, it's such a good place to get work done. It's very inspiring. Lots of good people, lots of interesting projects happening simultaneously. And, um, yeah, you just get to see how everyone does their work really well. Okay, I think I put little pads here. The costume is like, actually, it has a little wiggle room. It doesn't have to be super exact because this is a flashback. This is in the past. So I can change it a little. I just want to be relatively consistent. Um, I think I'm going to make the pants like a darker shade of red. Hot sauce kiddo, what's up, what's up? Yeah, I'm loving this splash too. This is um one of those things that, you know, I had like a lot of versions of how to do this scene. Um and it's a little bit of a spoiler, but not not super. Um but the the point of it is to show Unmaker and Red Thunder working together really well a la superman and batman so i wanted like a mini adventure that they could have together uh in in like three pages so this is this is what i came up with okay that's looking good boom there we go okay so now that that's there, I'm going to go in and do a few more inks since I understand it better. I have this layer up here, which is um, uh, just inks. I just have to make sure I select the right black because sometimes I select this over here. I don't know if you can see me like tap on it. Uh, and this is not black. This is like a dark purple, um, but it's, you know in my rush to get things done, I sometimes select the wrong thing. So I'm 
reminding myself. Uh, and then I have these, I don't know if you see here on the left, with the brush I'm using, the inking brush, I am um, picking certain weights. This is the weight I like to use for hatching and stuff, so that's what I'm going to do there. I'm like, ooh, I need his cape to feel capey. <laughs> this is so scientific and precise. Um, yeah, I need it to feel very capey. So here are some form lines that will kind of tell you how the cloth is going. And actually, I'm, I'm bouncing around across multiple pages as I work, just because this is one of those, you know, I'm starting to get a sense that there are some pages in this book that's going to take like... 50 hours or so. Um, this looks like one of those 50 hours. Maybe it won't take 50 hours. Maybe it'll just be like, I don't know, 30 or something. Mostly because the colors for the for the enemies are very simple. They're not um, they're not like the cover to Secret Heart Attack one. But. Um, since it's it, it takes so long to get this page done, whoops, um, it's good to get the, something's up with my Apple Pencil, it's good to um, sort of bounce between this page and other pages as you go. Boom. Hot Sauce Kiddo says, so excited to pick up your Shazam story when it comes out. Yeah, oh my god, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so hyped for that. That ha that comes out at the end of the month. The The final order cutoff just finished, it was January 31. But um, yeah, my first, my first mainstream professional gig. Um, it's so nice. It's been seven years since I moved from the Philippines here to New York, and that's um, that's a uh, that's a dream, you know. <laughs> it's a dream. Uh, I can't. I can't even. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> every time I think about it, I try to forget about it. But every time I think about it, I start getting like stupidly giggly and like you know. I just can't believe it. That's all I'm saying. Like, I can't believe they, they, they thought my art was good enough. You know what I mean? I can't believe I'm gonna see my shit on a DC, in a DC comic. Like, I, I now I'm like, I hope, I hope I get a a Marvel comics gig. You know, that'd be great too. Um. Like, just keep checking things off the bucket list, right? I'd love to draw X Men. Obviously, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see like five bajillion X-Men drawings like every day. I'd love to draw them one day. Uh, but obviously, I love DC stuff too. I mean, Secret Heart Attack is basically <laughs> like uh, so much of it is a love letter to DC stuff. Like this is clearly a Superman analog and or, or Shazam-ish. Uh, this guy's like a Batman analog. They're just working off of the archetypes that people are familiar with. Um, and it allows me to draw my... I mean, for me, I'm thinking, you know, this the sequence, uh, the specific thing I'm, um, I'm referring to with this is Grant Morrison's JLA, like circa the 90s. Uh, this is what... This is like as if... Imagine Grant Morrison writing these characters. That's what I'm thinking when I'm writing these characters um, in JLA in the 90s. And, like, what, what kind of stupid hijinks would they be getting up to? What ridiculous things? Like, of course they're fighting Mother Goose characters. You know what I mean? Some cool stuff like that. Uh, wait. Let me... Silver Phantom. There's Silver Phantom X. Hello. Welcome back. Um... I know you might not mean that much, but as a fellow Filipino, your work is such an inspiration to me. It might not mean that. Uh, hot sauce, it, it, it means a lot. It means a lot. Um, as a, a Filipino 
growing up in the Philippines, where, you know, the idea of New York was, like, all fiction to me, um, seeing comics drawn by Filipinos, like, I, I met Neil Francis Yu, I don't know if you guys know, Lionel Francis Yu is a super famous, important X-Men artist for the ages. He's worked with all the best X writers. He's worked with Chris Claremont. He had a run with, he had a bit of Grant Morrison with um, the new X-Men run. Um, he also uh, worked on, most recently, on Hickman's, um, Jonathan Hickman's Dawn of X. Uh, he did the X-Men issues. Uh, with 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 Jerry Alangilan, who I also met uh, when I was young, God rest his soul, Jer- Jerry. I love that guy. Um, but uh, it it made such a huge impression on me as a kid in high school, <clears throat> meeting artists and knowing that they were Filipino like me. You know what I mean? Like drawing these things that I loved. Like it it means a lot. To, to feel like you're represented and to see people like you doing the things you want to do, right? It was very encouraging. And I, I clearly I clearly remember when Neil Francis Yu, when I met him, um, like the, <laughs> the, the bit of advice he told me. Because I showed him my super shitty sketchbook in high school, which was full of like ballpoint pen drawings. And some of them were like, copies of his work because I copied his work a lot I'm so it's so embarrassed I copied his work and I copied Joe Madureira's work um because I was just so into like X-Men comics and and Neil was drawing Wolverine at the time um he had a legendary Wolverine run uh but like I showed him my drawings and then he was looking at the drawings that I hadn't copied like that I'd drawn on my own and he said look at your work in the mirror right flip it always flip it so that you can see the errors and that really stuck with me because um you know he he explained that um when you you look at things when you work on something for really long especially you know comics pages are like so many drawings at the same time um it, it you get myopic you know you start to lose the the sense of um, of what's working and what's not working. So a good way to kind of uh, short circuit that and sort of get past your brain's ability to get used to things is to flip it so that you see it again uh, in an unfamiliar light. And then you can start to see like, oh, okay, wait, the, the, the head is a little distorted. It doesn't look distorted until I flip it. But like now that it's flipped, I know that I got to adjust it or something like that, you know? So what I love now is like, uh, back then, obviously, no iPad, no no Photoshop. I wasn't doing those things. I was just doing it traditionally. So I would hold it up to a mirror. Uh, I have a mirror right here in my studio in front of me. So it, I can still do that with traditional art. But with Procreate, you can just do like a four finger tap and flip like this. And then I can see kind of like what's working, if there's anything I want to change. And you know, it's never going to be 100% perfect. I mean, like, really, if I had my druthers, I'd probably redraw this because there's some stuff here that I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. It's a little, like, stretchy, but I'll forgive it if it does more or less what what I, what I want it to do, you know? Anyway, long ramble. Uh, but it means a lot to me, hot sauce kiddo, just saying. Like, and I can't wait to see your work. I'm so excited to see what, what comics you come up with, um, you know? Uh... We, we need more. <laughs> we need more comics, more personal, interesting comics in the world from people. Um, we need new ideas. You know, it's gotta... It's, that's the only way the medium is gonna progress. If people keep sharing their unique perspectives and, you know, sh- uh, synthesizing what they're into, into, like, new interesting comics, right? Oh my god! Uh, Steven Walker is here. (laughs) Hey, Steve Walker. Uh, Guys, Steve Walker is in the chat. He is the instructor of the comics class I was talking about a while ago. He is uh, my favorite instructor at the Art Students League. Uh, He's a really good artist. Uh, And I'm honored to have you here on the my lunch break live stream. Welcome, guys. 
minutes on lunch break live streaming. Um, yeah, I'm working from home today, so <laughs> I can take my lunch break at home and just do this. But yeah. Okay, so I think this is enough. This is looking good. I'm going to go back in and do more stuff, but I feel like... Um, I feel like I'm overdoing it now, so it's time to move to another page. So I'm going to move to page two. And page two is a lot rougher, you're going to see here. Um, but it's time to tighten these up. So this is the original version of it. Um, as I was just like sketching really quickly. And then this is sort of like a little more refined version. I did this on the bus. I'm going to turn off all of these um, letters so that it's not too spoilery. I really should have grouped those, but I'm a little messy when, I'm, when the pages are forming up. So let's throw this down here. Boom. I'm so excited for this panel four. I don't know if you can see it. That's going to be Mother Earth floating over the Earth. It's going to be great. Uh, but I have these, uh, I have a weird sort of radial page structure to this. Uh, you're going to see some, you know, it's kind of like forming these curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my heavyweight line here. And I'm going to draw it roughly and then notice how I'm using quick line in procreate to sort of snap it into a a uh, a line so there we go I'm gonna make it like that and I'm wondering if I should do borders on this as in like gutters if I should put like white lines between panels I might not only because it's um the th here's the thinking, right? Now, I know I know white lines between panels make things clear. And if we look at issue one, you know, I did it here in this part. Uh, but I, I kind of did it inconsistently. I did it here and there, right? But since this is sort of a pastiche page, um, that reminds me of like the 90s. Howard Porter, Grant Morrison, JLA Comics. Uh, I think I want to do like overlapping panels with no gutters. And just give you that real 90s vibe. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure. The The only downside of that is I'm going to need to. Um, I'm going to need to make sure the colors pop the panels right. So it's not confusing. So we're going to do that. Oop, this curve is not what I want. Let's do it again. Uh, that's a little better. Let's do it one more time. That's it. Boom. And then this is another one. Boom. And I'm going to lower the line here because this is actually inside the panel. This is the curvature of the earth. I'm going to put that in there. And honestly, it should be on its own panel. So we're just going to freehand it. And we're going to cut and paste it into a separate layer. Uh, and then, okay, those are my panel borders. I'm also going to put one over here. Like that. And that should do it, more or less. Now, I have another circular element going up here, and that's the eye of my machine. So I'm just going to like make that happen. And again, I'm using quick line to make a circle. And if I put one finger down, it makes like a perfect circle. I'm going to make it a little smaller in the panel. It has some dialogue. Uh, and I'm going to clean up this line a little bit so it's not so, I don't know. It looks a little more natural. All right. Okay, okay. So we're good. Now I am going to start tightening up the drawing. How am I doing on time? It's uh, 
almost 30 minutes. I'm going to try to keep this to an hour. So I don't know what your schedules are. Um, but I'm going to make sure to leave this up, uh, the video up on the channel after. So if you need to run, you know, you can catch up again later. Should be good. This is going to be a pencils layer. So I'm just going to keep to a thick brush. And make sure it's uh, still keeping it broad and not too noodly and inky. You know what I mean? I don't want to overdo this yet. I don't want to commit until it's perfectly cool to commit. Uh, and the figure I'm drawing here is Unmaker. He is making his final run towards the eye of my machine. And I'm doing a little foreshortening here. You can see his foot is proportionally like a bit larger, right? That makes it feel like it's in front and then it's sort of foreshortening as it moves into the background. And I'm gonna draw his other foot here and it's way smaller. It's almost like a, a third of the size because it's, uh, it's, it's moving way forward. The Unmaker's costume too is one of those things I'm trying to keep flexible uh, because it's 90s and he's a spawn sort of archetype as well, not just a Batman. So I don't know if how many of you guys have read Spawn, but I totally read like the first hundred issues like i went crazy for all of that and spawn's costume changes a lot it changes a ton over the course of those um hundred issues so i want unmakers to sort of be the same thing and to still look super cool you know any and anyway it's a living costume right it's made from like ectoplasm and like hell stuff so check in chat i hope you're all uh drawing interesting things along with me hopefully some cool comics that you're gonna show me okay i'm overdrawing this next and then here i'm gonna draw his face this is where Unmaker is, um, he's shouting at the creature. And he has a skull motif, but also I'm giving him like a regular nose. Uh, I don't know why, it just sort of happened in the design and I thought it was very distinctive to him. I didn't want him to have no nose because it just felt too spawny. Like, step it to the side a little bit. I'm going to put little energy bits coming out of his eyes, like that. Boom. Feeling good, looking good. And he has this weird sort of upside down Y um, rune on his forehead. I don't know what it means. Like someone asked me about that. I'm like, I don't know what it means. I just sort of happened while I was designing him. So I just kept it. I like that it looks like a crack. He's sort of um, a, an agent of um, entropy in the book. Um... So I'm really happy with this design. I could draw it over and over. And that's how you feel. That's how you know it's a good design. If you're excited to draw it over and over. 
I'm gonna change the the angle of his horns a bit. And really, they're getting a little big here compared to the previous page, but that's okay because he is malleable. Okay, I need his hand here making a fist. Get some some of the knuckles there. And the really critical thing here is the chains because that's a big plot point. I didn't show any chains in the first issue. Well, I, I kind of did. I showed it in like a like a background sketch. But he has these chains, which are really important to the story. So they sort of just come out of the shadows of his costume and they're super wicked. Oh, Bruno Bastos. Hello. Hello. Say hello to Brazil, my friend. Hello, Brazil. Oh my gosh, I can't believe someone from Brazil is on watching me. That's cool. I've never been to Brazil, but um, I do have a story <laughs> related to Brazil. Um, so if you see the studio behind me, like all the furniture is from my friend Mariana, who um, when I first moved to New York, uh, I met her in Dan Thompson's uh painting class and we had such a good time because we were both silly um silly painters who were trying to do like imaginative things with um while looking at life reference and our we did like wacky paintings and stuff together uh but she is uh she's japanese portuguese um uh from brazil And um, a few months after we we hung out, like after a few months after I met her, uh, she and her husband had to move to Canada very suddenly because he he got a job offer that he couldn't say no to. And they had this apartment in Brooklyn and basically they were trying to sell all their stuff. And uh, on the last day before they had to fly off, they told me to please come to their apartment with a truck. Um, so I rented the truck for 200 bucks and went to their apartment and basically they said like anything you, um, we, this is everything that we weren't able to sell. If you need anything for your apartment, um, feel free to grab it. So I got all these tables, um, from, from their apartment. Basically I got my furniture from them <laughs> and this chair, this chair that I'm using right now, if you can see it, uh, it's kind of, it needs to be replaced. It's the chair you can hear squeaking uh, during my YouTube videos. Uh, but yeah, it served me well. My, my desk setup, my, my drawing setup, it's all those tables from Mariana. I hear there's like a, a very... Uh, there's a significant Japanese population in Brazil. Anyway. That's my story. Like all the stuff I owe to her. All right, this panel is coming together. I keep forgetting that he has this breastplate thing, but it's going away from us. So I gotta be careful not to over render it. Here's the center line. And give me a sec. How are we doing on time? Doing pretty good. Hey, I'm getting a bunch of stuff done. 30 minutes. That's him. 
he also has these like spines coming out of his back like that but that's when he's like full-on super evil mode which is a little later in the story so i'm not gonna put that here because it's a flashback all right and we'll put that there All right, so that's, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna be right back. And we're back. Uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. Okay, so this panel shaping up. I'm gonna do some rendering there. I think there's gonna be like a strong light coming from here, coming from the eye. So I'm gonna have to like, I mean this, I overhatched this. There's, I'm gonna have to deal with these hat, the, the, the shadows and the like where, where it actually goes later on when I go into inks. Uh, but that should do for now, more or less, tells me what's happening, right? Uh, my only issue is the... This sort of, like, cape thing, this collar, just should just go off into the side like that. And then it's that line's too smooth. Maybe I'm going to make it, like, a little rough like that. There we go. I think that feels better okay that's panel two and then panel one has the eye so something like that and um, I should probably draw a little bit like so what's going on here is there inside He's inside some sort of power core. So actually, there are these radial lines coming out, which kind of help with the perspective of this whole thing. This radial lines coming out of the eye, which is at the center. And it's all this like, Jack Kirby tech going on around it so we're gonna this is the only part that's like non mother goose because this is what the creature really looks like as a cybernetic entity it's this predatory AI evil AIs in comics to reflect evil AIs in real life <laughs> I'm not going to dig into that topic. <laughs> uh, Silver Phantom X says, I just realized it's not Sunday. It's Draw With Me moving to Friday. Um, Silver Phantom X, I'm not sure. That's my honest answer. Uh, my schedule's sort of been in flux since the new year started. So I haven't pinned down when Draw With Me would actually comfortably happen regularly. And um, you missed it, but like at the start of the stream, I kind of mentioned I'm, I'm changing my setup. This is going to be the last one from this PC, this Windows PC, uh, because I'm going to say goodbye to this computer, which is like seven years old and dying. And um, I mean, you remember from the past streams, we had all these technical issues. It's because the, the USB ports, um, actually, it's not even that. The, the controllers in the motherboard are a little fried now. And so they don't work reliably. 
Uh, so I'll be upgrading my computer this coming Monday. I'm going to go to Delaware to buy a new PC. And then we're going to sort of change my setup and change how it works. Um, which is hopefully going to make everything easier, a little more mobile. It's going to be a laptop. Um, I'm going to replace my PC with a MacBook. Uh, so I'm going to kind of figure out how to incorporate that into my life. And the, the, the blue sky ideal is that I'm able to do these things more often because I actually draw a lot during the week. Like, you know, I mean, I, I've been do I was doing the draw with me's last year, like one hour a week, but I could actually do way more. I could do like, you know, I could maybe do one a day. I don't know. I don't want to say something I can't commit to, but um, I could do this more often if my setup was a little more reliable and didn't take too much fiddling with. So uh, that's a long way of saying um, stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, Nico Acevedo says, are you getting a Mac? Um, yes, I am. Uh, I'm going to get... Oh, I'm so excited. I, I'm controlling my feelings because I saved up for it for the last three years. Um, I'm going to get one of the new M2 MacBook Pros. So, uh, that's I've already, I've already paid for it. Um... It, it's it's expensive, but that's why I'm going to Delaware for it because um, Delaware has no sales tax, and so I'm saving a lot of money in tax uh, by going there. So I'm gonna take a train on Monday, and we're gonna. I just realized something. I realized the these lines should be also radial, so we're gonna do that. And since this is pencil, it doesn't need to be like perfect, perfect, but it's got to do that. There we go. That makes more sense. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's why I'm going to Delaware on Monday to get a MacBook. The big downside to that, <laughs> I don't know how many of you are uh, gamers, but um, I, I, love to, I love games. I, I'm super into video games. Uh, I don't actually game much, but I like I watch all the news. I geek out on what games are winning, what games are cool. Like I the one game I wanted to play super badly last year was Elden Ring and my PC just couldn't handle it. My PC can't play it. And and the the downside to getting a Mac is gaming is sh like anemic you know in in that ecosystem. So um, the other thing I'm thinking of getting, maybe a little later this year, because I feel like it's a, it's there's it's expensive. It's it's not that expensive, but it's expensive. Um, I want to get a Steam Deck, so I can game, and that's gonna like. That's gonna let me have all the PC games, while having like all my workflow stuff. Since I'm on the iPad, I have an iPhone. It just kind of makes more sense to be on a Mac right now and their chips are just better and the 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 battery life since I'm a very mobile person uh it just makes more sense for me given the type of uh, artist that I am as much as I'm a Windows person born and bred uh I'm okay with the change uh, Silver Phantom X says, watching on a 2012 Mac desktop. I should start saving up for, I'm sure my computer is about to go out of date, lol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I keep thinking um, when you when you get a computer, especially like a desktop, like your main rig, you want to get it with the idea that it should last you for like five to seven years. Uh, so that's kind of how long I'm, I'm planning to keep my, my next rig. And that's why I'm getting the latest thing. I want to future-proof it. And basically, I don't want to have to think about it ever. Um, I just want it to do what I need and not have, like, failing USB ports or, like, things falling out. Uh, we'll see. It's going to be a, a learning curve this February uh, as I get used to that. But I'm very excited for it. I love tech. 
plus I heard No Man's Sky is coming to Mac. I don't know if you, any of you know about No Man's Sky, but it's like a uh, a space exploration game, a la Minecraft, but like not blocky. Anyway, I've been playing it on the Switch and it's great, and I'm I'm in I'm I'm into it, but because it's the Switch, um, the graphics are not great it's it's actually kind of wondrous that it it runs well on the switch but i wish um it was a little more immersive and i'm excited for it to come to mac so anyway that's my video game blabber uh i think this is working so we'll do that uh this star is sort of another mother goose character creature thing so we're gonna put that there and then here is the hand of little boy blue Oh wait, no, not Little Boy Blue. It's Little Jack Horner. Uh, little Jack Horner who sat in a corner and st stuck his pie. He uh, stuck his thumb in a pie? Something like that. Anyway, they're all nursery rhyme creatures. But like evil, evil robot nursery rhyme creatures. It's gonna be dope. Alright, that's done. I, I don't want to overdo that. It makes sense. Let's go to this panel, which is awesome. So first, I need the eye. Oop. The eye is a big circle, and I'm gonna... It's sort of a fish eye effect here, so I need the eye to sort of do that. There we go. Alright, that sort of makes sense. And then we have uh, Unmaker here sort of doing his super cyan move except instead of energy coming out of him it's chains so actually i want to open up his breastplate a little bit so that it's like the, sh the costumes opening up to release chains it's cool How are we doing? 45 minutes. Uh, I'm going to end the stream at 3 p.m., okay, guys? Um, just because I got to get back to work, they're going to kill me. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff to finish today. Uh, so 15 minutes left. Let's see how much work we can get done in that period. I love a time limit. Even though um, it sometimes makes me sloppy, but time limit's cool. Uh, I'm not sure about that gesture. And he doesn't have a hand on this side. It's actually the... That syringe thing. And I think it's better if his hand is in a fist, as if he's really, like, clenching it up to make the chains come out. There we go. Boom. Noah! Hello, hello! <laughs> uh, Hot Sauce Kiddo says, Did you hide Germinator in Soup Secret Heart Attack? I did not hide him. He is he is in Secret Heart Attack. He is there in the background. See? This green guy down here. Um, Uh-oh. Did my stream pause? This, this green guy down here is... Uh, give me a sec. What's going on? Are we behind? I just noticed that the the stream is a little behind. Give me a sec. Let's see if I can uh, reset the connection. Stop mirroring. Boom. And then let's reset it again. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, we have, like, issues with my current thing. Anyway, so Germinator is here, down there, um, in the bottom right, the green guy. And I want to give him a moment in issue two, but there's so much going on, so it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But I definitely want him to do stuff. He's also here. Oh, spoilers, guys. <laughs> He's here on this page in the background. You can see him. The green guy in the back there. 
it's gonna do some stuff anyway let's get back to this page I have like 13 minutes left Okay, so I'm just gonna draw his cloak doing its cloaky thing. I kind of want like a Batman silhouette here. Just to underline the grim and grittiness of everything. Uh, and then the chains go out here. I'm not gonna draw them. Uh, I'm just gonna draw the... I'm not gonna draw every chain, but I'm just gonna draw kind of how the chains will go as a note to my future self to draw them only because I don't want to like I don't need to ink precisely I can just draw them in ink so they're gonna do that like that and honestly this line should be a little loose so like that huh? like that boom uh yeah, I see. I'm noticing some delay in the the drawing, like the the drawing signal to the PC. So I'm sorry if it's a uh, it's not matching up to what I'm talking about uh, 100 percent. But this will be improved in the next live stream when I get the new rig. Uh, so yeah. So, um, Silver Phantom X says, I'm a Nintendo person. Sadly, no time to play games on TV, computer. Have to go portable with Switch. Same. <laughs> I, uh, I badly, badly, uh, I mean, I really, really love the Switch. I'm happy that I get to, like, take my games with me. And honestly, this May, when Totka comes out, uh, Totka is Tears of the Kingdom, the, um, the sequel to Breath of the Wild, uh, I'm just gonna like have my Switch with me everywhere, all the time. The Switch is basically a Zelda machine, you know. Uh, but that's also why I want a Steam Deck, because it's portable. You know, I don't need a. I, I basically I want all my stuff to be portable, so I can work anywhere. Because I'm I'm always like on the bus. I'm like in New York. I'm um, I'm at coffee shops. You know, I just I like working. I like working out and about. And I just like having the option of uprooting everything. And I'm just so happy we live in times where technologically you can carry around a machine that is basically like a video editing rig as well as a um a a, a drawing studio and a gaming PC. You know what I mean? Like it it can do everything. Except the Macs can't really game really well, but whatever. It can game a little. All right, and then the, here's the eye. I don't know how expressive I can make the eye, but um, I want there to be a little fear in that eye. So that's the eye. And then I'm going to move on to panel four in the last 10 minutes of this stream. And I'm going to draw Mother Earth. And um, hopefully the drawing stream catches up and you guys can see it. But we're moving at a good clip here. I, I, I'm having so much fun drawing issue two, by the way. I just love it. I love issue two. Issue one was hard because there was so much setup I had to do. To get all the superheroes introduced and like the concept um, properly outlined. There's just a, like a lot of narrative requirements for issue one. But issue two is where I can go a little nuts and be like, okay, I'm going to be weird for the weird, you know, for weirdness is sick. Just because, you know, <laughs> um, just because everything's already established. So I can go a little off. Um, off base and and do some funky stuff so i can't wait uh you know i get to do a little jla pastiche at the opening uh i'm gonna do some some weird vertigo stuff in the middle because i love vertigo comics like i don't know if i can get a sandman reference in there but i'm gonna try i love neil gaiman too you know um 
a little Sandman reference, especially since the the story is about imagination and the power of like, you know, of like dreams. Like literally, the first line of the book is um, we keep the dreams we put on paper. So I, I don't know. I, I I just feel like I should put a Sandman reference in here somewhere, to keep it true and honest. And this is really like the series where I get to like refer to like all the comics I love because that's you know it's a synthesis right here's mother earth um Nico Acevedo says the combo macbook plus ipad is amazing you will love it oh man if you have it I'm tell me like I'm so excited because I feel like it's gonna do really well like I basically live on my ipad right now every like First issue of Secret Heart Attack, I did all of that on the iPad. My DC work, my upcoming DC work, I did all of that on the iPad. Uh, it's just like the iPad is at the point where you can use it as your main drawing thing. It's so great. Uh, Devon D says, oh, Miguel, Miguel Avilas Jenkins. I hope I don't butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Um, hey Andrew, greetings from Costa Rica. I really like your art style. What's up, Miguel? Thank you for being on the stream. Um, hello to Costa Rica. Greetings from New York. Um, I'm made in the Philippines, but I'm in New York. But so greetings from both. Uh, Devon D says, I just found your stuff and love all your content. What would you recommend to comic artists trying to get start to get into the industry? Trying to start to get into the industry. So I have a video, Devon. Um, it, it's called How to Have a Career in the com in Comics. And I, I made that video before I even broke in. Uh, so I would watch that because I think it holds true. Uh, basically, to sum it up really quickly, um, you want to be two of three things. Good, fast, and nice. You know, and the video explains what that means. But you want to be at least two of those. Um, the other bit of advice I would give you and just recommendation is make your own comics. Don't wait for a gatekeeper or, or someone to like, you know, say, give you give you a publishing deal or whatever. Just just make your own stuff. Put it out online. Um, this this comic, uh, Secret Heart Attack, I'm printing this out of my own pocket. Uh, you know, it, it it's a... Uh, it, it's it's a lot of money. It's like three hundred bucks per per print run, but 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 it's nice, and I get to like you know be indie and like learn and all that stuff. It's worth it. It's just worth the experience because I feel like in comics, self publishing your stuff is such a badge of honor, and I think, I mean I may be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I do. I feel like right editors respect artists who are just putting their own stuff out there, right? Um, because it kind of shows them that you can get, the, you're a self-starter, that you can get the job done even without them. So don't wait. Just just make your own comics now. Put them out. Don't wait till you're ready. It's okay if it's rough. It's okay if it's not perfect. Um, just grow up in public. Get better. And like, you know, as, as you go. I'm not like... I see some of the stuff I've, I've put out there and it's not like the best art or whatever, but I feel like I'm getting better with every project and that's fine. Like as long as, um, as long as, uh, I'm improving slowly and surely I'm learning from my mistakes. And as long as it tells the story, like functionally, it's okay. It's, it's fine. So yeah, that's my advice. Just keep making your stuff. Um, how often do you go live? Mr. Fish asks, I, uh, so I don't know. <laughs> um, Silver Phantom asked this a while ago. Like, uh, the status of lives is I'm right now, I'm doing going live because I can't make a real video this week. Um, I just don't have time because it's a busy weekend. But I'm going to try to go live um, in the future. I'm aiming to go live once a week. Uh, but we'll see. I'm I'm kind of in the middle right now of a transition. So I'm trying to figure out my tech setup and, you know, all this other stuff and sort of my schedule with work and I have a day job, so uh yeah. It's it's a lot of like negotiation at the moment. But um yeah, eventually 
I'm gonna try to be weekly. So you guys can see this sort of like happening, right? Uh, as as I as I work on it. Um, uh, more questions. Do you read a lot of comics? Yes. Which ones would you recommend? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that because I feel like it would um it would uh take all day. Uh, top of mind. Uh, right now I am. I love Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise. And if you can find it, grab it. It's uh it's by a writer artist named Trad Moore. I'm so in love with his work. His art is like just perfect, just weird and like it's oblique and strange and it's a comic that functions like I should probably do a video about that. It's a comic that functions like poetry. It's so good. It's so it's so wonderful and it reminds me of like Everything I love about comics, which is when you open a comic book and you see something you've never seen before and it's in my brain now. You know, I love that stuff. Um, uh, more, more questions. Against, are, are you against... Comic Journeys asking, are against traditional art versus digital art? Um, you know, that's the tension, right? That's the question of the modern day. Like, you know... Uh, so much of comics has been built on traditional art and there is, um, you know, technology's progressed now where you can really make good comics purely digitally, right? But I do feel that traditional art is good training. I feel like digital art spoils you. So, um, like, because you have all these options on your fingertips and you can undo every line. And basically, if, if you're, all you're doing is digital art, it's, it's, I feel like it's not great for your development. Like, it's good to bounce back and forth. Um, and to answer Charlie Harper's question, uh, do you keep a traditional sketchbook anymore? I do. Um, I keep a lot of traditional sketchbooks, but... Uh, here is a Cahier. No, this is a Cass Art sketchbook that I carry around. Um, uh, this is so terrible. Here, here, here. Oh my god. Okay, here's a good drawing. I'll show you something cool. This is a drawing of Grant Morrison that I did. Ballpoint sketch. It's a ballpoint sketch of Grant Morrison that I did um, when he visited New York, when they visited New York on their Luda tour. Uh, but anyway, this this sketchbook has like a lot of um, really ugly drawings. Here's some secret heart attack sketches. I don't know if you can decipher them, but there's Mother Earth. That's uh, over there. That's Mother Earth there, uh, which you can also see on screen. Uh, so I keep traditional sketchbooks. I also have a, a moleskin. Here's some, this is a drawing of my friend Richard Bobian, who is um, in the comics class as well, the comic class I talked about. Here's some Unmaker sketches I did during the bus. Um, I know, I always draw on the bus, it's so crazy. I managed to train myself. Oh, here is some um, early Mother Goose sketches for the villain in this sequence that I'm drawing. And, oh no, <laughs> I feel like I'm running out of time. And I also have like bigger sketchbooks with like watercolors in them. Uh, so stuff like that. This is like watercolor and ink. Anyway, um, which is to say, go to, go have a sketchbook but work on the iPad also and just do do everything. Do both. Jump back and forth and it's going to be good for your, your mental health and development as an artist because you... And anyway, it's good for your brain to like shift tools, you know, so you don't become too dependent on one tool, right? Uh, the only reason I'm doing this on the iPad is because I need to be able to do print-ready pages, Um for my daily life, you know what I mean? I need to be able to do it anywhere, on the bus and whatever, and I just can't carry an 11 by 17 pad with, you know, my pencils and everything. It's just, it's not practical for me, given that I'm always moving back and forth from Jersey and New York, and, you know, I'm on subways and buses and stuff, so.
that's why secret heart attack is done digitally it's a uh, it's more convenient for my life but you also do what works well for you um you know uh whatever gets you drawing fastest and the most because the more you draw the better you get etc etc uh we're past an hour i know and i'm late for work so i am gonna call this done thank you so much guys this is the the stream's a little delayed but uh, I got to get back to work. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>